and we're back with another episode of the Aussie Clone Wars collection where we have a look and review a lot of the figures that we have here in the collection uh, which is predominantly of the Clone Wars TV series stretching back from 2008 and I think up most till the 2012 it was a Hasbro toy line uh, for the Disney show Star Wars or the now Disney show Star Wars The Clone Wars uh, we like to have a look at a lot of the figures that we have in the collection here we've got a lot of bit of different ones uh, which we've been collecting for about 15 years or so but today's focus will be the Jedi not particularly the Jedi Council there's a few others that didn't make the Jedi Council but all the ones that appeared within the show there was a lot of uh, character greats which have since gone on had their own shows like Ahsoka others which have had their other stories which have been developed in comics uh, and other TV series a notable one there will be Barris Offee and other ones which of course were used in the movies uh, namely the original or the, the prequel trilogy, which of course had minor appearances in the Clone Wars TV show. Now, I start off all my videos with acknowledging two things, which is that I was very fortunate in picking up a lot of these because where I grew up, again, I tell the story all the time, the toy store that no one visited, no one was interested in, except for me, got down there and picked up everything that I chose. And he was the man. He brought in all the toys in the world and just no one bought them except for me. So I've I feel like in hindsight, I probably could have had shares in that shop. Uh, but the other thing is that we go on a rant about how Disney, it just had an absolute money-making and, and fan-favorite show in Star Wars The Clone Wars. And when they acquired you know, Lucas, Lucasfilm and LucasArts from George Lucas in their, in their big purchase, they scrapped it for no other reason than Disney wanting to do their thing and put their spiel and their brand on everything. But they had a winner in The Clone Wars and they just couldn't see that. Um, unfortunately, they were buying something that they only saw as a money-making thing. The bosses that they got in there now, they're not Star Wars fans. they got no idea. They pretend that they are because they've had success with Marvel and they know all about sci-fi, uh, but they don't. Uh, there was obviously limited limited consulting when it came to things like the Bad Batch. We, we can all say that the Bad Batch is a you know something for the fans or something that the fans wanted. To be honest, and if we're, if we're brutally honest with ourselves, it was Disney's attempt at admitting a mistake had gone wrong, and they brought something back. Uh, you know, the Bad Batch, what is it? They're clone troopers, starts in the Clone Wars. You know, the animation style is very similar, and it, it's what the Clone Wars would have developed or evolved into. Uh, but they made a mistake, and, and we can all see that. I know that they can, they can see that, they just can't admit that. But they lose nothing by bringing back a Star Wars The Clone Wars figure line. Um, and there's many great figures that they could bring back. We're going to have a look, like I said, at the Jedi today. Uh, but we've also had some suggestions uh, from a few people that have sent me uh, some comments uh, and some other mentionings as well. Hit me up through the private. We'll have a, a quick, quick rundown of figures that they could produce today, which would still be quite popular. Uh, for those of you that remember, I believe it's in Season 1 or Season 2, Cad Bane has to hunt down a Jedi in the Outer Rim, and he holds the key to the uh, to the Holocrons and so on. His name was Bolo Rapal, a Rodian, a Rodian Jedi who was tortured and killed. What a fantastic figure he would have made. There's not many of those in existence. I believe there's one from the Attack of the Clones Geonosis pack, uh, where he's you know not created in the Clone Wars style. But he's fantastic, and he's the only one of his kind. We could have had him in the collection here today, but they never made him. But they lose nothing by making him, because they know everyone will pick him up. A Pong Krell figure would have been absolutely bought off the shelves in droves. He was a fantastic character, despite being evil. You know, his design was something so different, not something anyone had ever seen before. His story arc was fantastic, whether you agreed with him or not. Those four episodes on Umbara were some of the best ever produced in any cartoon series ever. And I will defend it to the death about that. Another thing I believe that we could see is a Clone Wars style Dark Anakin. How he is when he arrives on Mustafa. All we need is to get the sculpt of the Clone Wars Anakin which has already been produced. And you just make him dark. Change the eyes. Maybe add a little bit of burnt uh, to his clothing. Keep him with the blue lightsaber. Nothing needs to change except for the eyes. Possibly an angry appearance and a little bit of damage to his clothes. That would be a fantastic figure because we all know that's what he turns into. I think had they kept the show going and kept the toy line, that's one that we definitely would have seen. You know they have to produce an Anakin and an Obi-Wan and usually a Yoda or a Rex in every line. Uh, a Phase 2 Shock Trooper is one that I think would have come in. They had the Phase 2 white figure. Uh, that was quite popular. And all they needed to do was add a paint job. You see every custom 
of a phase two clone trooper is making them 501st or making them a shock trooper. I think it would have cost them nothing to create maybe a commander Apo uh, in the shock trooper gear, something like that, um, or whoever was in that, that gear. I believe we would have eventually seen one of those. And they could have made a Twi'lek Jedi. Now we know that there's Ayla Sakura. She's a Twi'lek, but she doesn't look like the other ones. We're talking the ones from when, for say, they did the Battle of Ryloth. If they could just get a mold of one like that and create some random Jedi, call him whoever you want, John Smith. Just create one like that to get a little bit of variety. I know they created some of the Jedi Council, but there's always an Anakin and an Obi-Wan and a Yoda and a Captain Rex. Something like that would have been quite good. And finally... For a little bit of a fan favourite, I think they could have created a Qui-Gon Jinn. Now, I think had they done this, they would have done him in ghost form. Would have been a complete waste of time, but that's, of course, how, how Disney would have worked. Uh, they can't see it for what it is. But if they had made a Qui-Gon Jinn in the Clone Wars animated style, I think that could have been an absolute moneymaker, that one. And obviously a good fan service. I know I would have picked that up straight away. Then you can have the line of Ahsoka, Anakin, Obi-Wan. Qui-Gon, Count Dooku, Yoda. You've got six generations of a Jedi Master and Apprentice line. It's the only one that's missing. And to be honest, having him in a place that would have been absolutely fantastic. Put him with someone if you want to. Put him in a pack with Maul. Whatever you got to do. It would have been no problem. Now, that aside, I know we're six minutes in. There are Four things I'll get you to consider because what we want to do here is we want to show off the collection, get used to think about what you're going to add to your collection, what you need to have in your collection. Aside from all the obvious ones that you need to have, which is all the different variants of Rex, and we've spoken about those, all the different battle packs that you need to get, which we've got plenty here and we're going to show throughout all the episodes we've got forthcoming. There was a two-pack which consisted of Clone Wars style Jawas. If you haven't got that, try and have a look for it because there's not going to be too many left. You hold on to that for too long, no one buys it, no one wants it, what do you do? You throw it out if you're not an average collector, or you open it. These people who do openings, I do not understand the logic. It is beyond me, and it's beneath me, I'm sorry. But if you're buying rare, valuable Star Wars The Clone Wars figures, which are two, three, four times their value, and you're opening that packet, I know you're living the experience that a lot of other people want to, but you are really... You're just sinking yourself. I don't get it. If you do it, stop it, is my recommendation. Do not open rare Star Wars figures. It's just a strange behavior. I don't understand it. I know it's all the rave at the moment, but it's a, it's a strange behavior. And there's, the logic behind it is only uh, subjective logic. It doesn't really work when you look at it as a whole. But if you find that two-pack of Jawas, which I think we've got one here somewhere. I didn't get it prepared, but there is one here. And make sure you pick up one of those because they're, they're a figure that not everyone bought at the time and they've since become a little bit more difficult to obtain. Uh, very much like our next one, which is the Geonosians. Mate. Anything with the Geonosian, whether it be Undead or the Geonosian Speeder Pack, pick that up because no one got those. You've got to get those. The other one is all the Bounty Hunters in the sets. The LS, you know, he, he, he was $10 in the shops. No one got him. But now to find one, they're out of packet, they're missing pieces. You know, Sergeant Brick, you had to get him in a mail or exclusive. Again, Bounty Hunter, pick him up. All the Bounty Hunter episodes that you watch, didn't they always turn out to be very interesting and very different to the normal niche of the episodes? The Bounty Hunters are fantastic. They didn't, they're didn't. the one that has, uh, I believe his name is Silas. I can't remember it now. He's the, he's the uh, android robotic one. His name will come to me shortly. That episode where they defend the farmers, they didn't make the female one, which I thought was strange. She was destined... The amount of characters that they made that were not popular, uh, and she, of course, was another innocuous, not popular character. I thought she was due for a figure, but they didn't give it to her. Uh, and the last thing I think that Disney would have created, I think, is the a pilot. They would have made possibly a Phase 2 Hawk or a Phase 2 Warthog. I know they did a Phase 2 Warthog, but they would have done probably more. They loved pilots. They always had to be a pilot in every action figure line. I don't know why, because they appeared for about four seconds in every episode. Right. Now that that's finished, we have that one rant per episode, and we've almost gone 10 minutes, which was my allotted time for that. Let's have a look at the Jedi figures which they made, which in my opinion, a lot of them were quite popular. A lot of them were quite elusive uh, on top of that. First things first, let's acknowledge what's in the room. We have all the Ahsoka figures in the background here. We've got the rare Dark Skies Ahsoka here. We've got the original Ahsoka with Rhoda Hutlet over here. 
The Ahsoka on the Vulture's Claw, where she's got the cloth goods. Very rare to find. It was not sold individually. You had to buy it in the pack. And you don't want to open the pack because it's very valuable. Up the top here. We've got the Scuba Gear Ahsoka. It was on the Darth Maul Battle Pack. Or Card Back. Scuba Gear. We all remember the episode uh, on the War on Mon Calamari. Fantastic episode. We do have a loose one here. I believe it's wrapped up. A lot of accessories in this pack. We're trying to keep this one in absolute mint condition, which I think we have, apart from maybe one corner down here. Everything else looks pretty good. She came with a lot of accessories. She's obviously got the mask in there. She's got all the uh, propeller stuff here. All the stuff for her feet, everything like that. Uh, we will show you one of the unique ones we have, which is the possibly the second hardest Ahsoka to get, which is the first Dark Skies one. And we were very fortunate to pick up one which was signed by Ashley Eckstein. Very lucky to get that. We've got the certificate back here. Now, I actually picked this up from a gentleman uh, from Australia. His name's Hayden Rawl. Uh, if you're interested, he's got a Facebook page in which he does auctions. I was very fortunate to be able to pick this up. I paid a fair bit for it, but it's worth every dollar. Fantastic figure. I was surprised he was willing to let it go. Nah, but you know how the world can be at times. Beautiful figure. Uh, I'm aware that that's not being captured entirely. Try and sort that out for you. Lovely figure there. That's just some of the unique ones which we have here. We'll keep that on the stage so he's going to have a geese. All right, on to the loose ones. While we're talking about Ahsoka, let's get the Ahsokas out of the way. The two loose ones that I've brought in uh, today. We've got the Space Gear Ahsoka. Not the easiest one to find. Not everyone kept them. Uh, but like I said, we had that blue card one in the back, being this one here, and we've got the figure itself. Very elusive to find. Even at the time when they came out, I believe there was only, uh, I can't remember the ratio, it was maybe one in every 500, one in every 1,000 uh, action figure pack that was sold in the store. I think only, it was the same with Colt. Colt had a one in a 1,000 ratio or one in a 100 ratio so for every hundred figures that was put up in the stores only one of them was going to be a cult or for every hundred that was boxed one was a cult i think this ahsoka had the same type of thing where it was exceedingly rare despite being so popular i again could not understand the logic of that you know she's one of the main characters but you only limited people can have them anyway i don't understand it there's some i'm sure there's some some marketing executive who got promoted for making that genius idea, but uh, he's hated by just about everyone else who actually bought the stuff. So that's the blue Ahsoka there. She's uh, the same one that's listed here in the blue card Ahsoka pack, the rare elusive one. We've got two. This is the one in the best condition. Unfortunately, the other one's got a little bit of a crease uh, in the the peg hook thing up the top. I don't want to bring that one in because it looks a bit shit. So that's one of the Ahsokas. We'll put them in the backdrop here. Just as a reminder for everyone when they review. The other one, there's the Space Gear Ahsoka. Great little figure. Uh, didn't have much articulation. You could only bend the knees, I believe the ankles. Couldn't bend the wrists or the elbows, which means whatever pose you put her in with the arms, she had to stay like that. Uh, the helmet is removable. We don't want to muck around with it too much. Same type of mold. You see there, she's got every all the designs on the head still. And that just slots back on. She came in a pack uh, with an Anakin. He also had his space gear. We'll put her back there. Up next, of course, we'll get these out of the way early. Uh, every Clone Wars collection has to have an, Ahso a, uh, an Ahsoka, an Anakin and an Obi-Wan. Not that you could ever avoid it, because there was always an Anakin and an Obi-Wan in every figure line that they did. You could not avoid it. But these, in my opinion, were the two best ones, the two basic ones. This Kenobi, I believe, comes out of the... I believe both of these two are the ones from the Greenback Yoda cards. There was many different ones in between, but these were the two best ones I found. I believe the Anakin, the base design and everything did not change at all. I don't think really anything changed for Anakin. I think in the first line in 2008, which is just the white back cards... He looks a little bit different, looks a little bit younger, a little bit cheaper. See him there. 
Uh, the Kenobi we know has changed. He first came in that Assault on Geonosis pack, uh, where he had all the armor and looked very much like the Tartakovsky version, made into the Clone Wars version, which I thought was uh, poor marketing and a poor decision to have a character on a show not look like a character from the show in the action figure just made absolutely no sense. So there's your Kenobi and your Anakin. You've got to have those. Now, let's move into the characters that aren't as easily accessible, or at least one of them. I've put them on a, put them both on the same pedestal here. The Yoda. Now, this is not the Yoda from the two-pack that he comes with. I believe it's Jack or Reese, in which we spoke about he's got the much darker green lightsaber. This is the basic Yoda. I think this is the Yoda that might come out of the original 2008 pack with the cloth goods. He's quite short. He's taken up not much space. We've put in with the Evan Peel, who is a fantastic character. One that you must have in your collection and your Jedi collection. Uh, I'm not too privy on all the information about him. I'm not sure what unit he leads and so on. I just know he's in the Citadel arc, in which he's captured and he has pertinent information. He's with the first appearance of Moff Tarkin, which is a great addition. That Citadel... Uh, arc was a great arc. A lot of different things they introduced. Bit of darkness. Darkness to characters. A lot of deaths. The Evan Peel figure. Quite detailed. You can see with the scars, the ears, and the hair. He's quite short. And he was a good character. He's one to pick up. I've noticed in a lot of friends that I have that have their own collections, they don't have him. I'm not sure why. I don't believe he was as popular uh, as, they, as I seem to believe. He was certainly important into the... Tr the transformation and the relevance of certain characters being Tarkin, you know, Echo is lost in retrieving him. Um, and of course, it brings brings to light some of the concerns about Anakin's character. So Evan Peel is an, is an important uh, Jedi figure to have. You could easily pick him up for just 50 bucks or less um, if you buy him loose. Buying him in packs is a little bit more difficult. Um, oh, Serapas was the name of that bounty hunter I was thinking before. But yeah, getting back to Evan Peel, buying him in pack is not as easy. Getting him loose is, is quite easy. However, don't be fooled. If you buy him loose, you'll often find that he's got a Yoda lightsaber when you buy him loose because people will try to trick you. Yoda has got a distinctive lightsaber, which is almost like a shorter version of Anakin's in that it's got that uh, part on the top, which is coned and a little bit diagonal. Evan Peel's is like a shorter version of Qui-Gon Jinn's. You have to be... Uh, aware of that detail if you've got an Evan Peel and you bought him loose from someone else make sure you have a look at the lightsaber that he's got because if you don't have the right one then he's incomplete because you haven't got the right one next one we'll look at is a male way a male away sorry exclusive being the Nadar Veb of course appearing in one episode in the layer of Grievous or Lair of Grievous it was a good character uh, for those of you that couldn't see the similarities, Kit Fisto and Nadar Veb shared the same similarities as Obi-Wan and Anakin. You had a rash apprentice, a young rash apprentice who just wanted to get into the action, in his mind was years ahead of where he was, wanted to get the job done, and then you had a wiser master who was trying to teach him the virtues of patience and why he needed to wait and think about what he was doing. Uh, it was very identifiable straight away. As soon as I watched that episode, even when I was a kid, I could see that this is a mimic of Anakin and Obi-Wan. It's an interesting insight to have in that where Obi-Wan is able to protect Anakin and keep him alive, unfortunately, Kit Fisto can't keep Nadar alive. Now, in the, in the opinion, had they been able to keep him alive, I think they could have had some good arcs with him, potentially later in later seasons, maybe season four or five, where they could have brought him back as a redemption character. He could have redeemed himself by now being, for say, another year into the war and coming back and being the hero of the day by saving some unit by using patience. I believe that was a missed opportunity there. We'll have a look at his master, uh, being Kit Fisto. Many variants of Kit Fisto. We're just going to use this one today. There is, of course, a snow gear one of him and a much uglier one from the Attack of the Clones line. But this one, I think they just got right. They got the smile right as we have a look here. We've got him with the dual lightsabers as he is on that pose when he takes on Grievous. He's got Nadar Veb's lightsaber there. This was one of the most fantastic figures. And when we do the video on the top 10 best figures overall, in terms of design, what they come with, 
um, how close they are to appearance of the character, I reckon this one's going to be in there. He might be number 9 or 10. He'll feature pretty early on, or even an honourable mention. But he'll get in there. Uh, that was a fantastic episode when he took on Grievous. And you've got Fisto, of course, disappearing uh, into the fog. I thought they couldn't have done that any better. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, we're going to have a look at the, the Kit Fistos in the packs. Look at the first one here. I mentioned that there was a snow Kit Fisto. We've got him there. And then, of course, the normal Kit Fisto. Both of them in absolutely fantastic condition. I've tried to keep these two in next to mint uh, as much as I can. If we have a look at the difference here, there is a different uh, head sculpt here, obviously, because it's not going to be as movable around. Uh, they lost a lot of value in that one. But this one here, which is the one we've showed before, absolutely beautiful. Couldn't ask for a better box. Beautiful artwork. Give them a little twirl. And again, I'm conscious that the camera's not picking all these up, but... Have a look back here. We're not going to get much of that. Here we go. Beautiful figure there. Really got to do something about this camera. As we come back, absolutely lovely. Bring in the other one. And there you have the snowpack kit fisto. I'll try and show you as much as, as I can to show you what you need to fulfill your collection. Um, we'll bring in a little uh, hidden treasure that we've got. I picked this up from a friend of mine by the name of Isaac Ryan here in Australia. Hit him up on Facebook if you find him. He's part of the Australian uh, Australian Toys fan page. He was able to give me a very unique and graded Nadar Veb. Uh, he was able to secure a 9 for this one, so we know he's in good condition. Lovely figure there. And a shout out to my friend who's looked after me for a couple of years. This one, of course, had a fold-out 3D display. Beautiful package there. Let's keep going. Another one that you must have in your collection because he was sold in just about every figure line was, of course, Mace Windu. Mace Windu, the most iconic character, Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, was not originally supposed to have a purple lightsaber, and he asked for one, and George Lucas gave it to him. We have a look at him there. We don't have to dwell on this one too much. I know everyone's probably got at least one mace. There is one that came out early uh, that did not have the cloth good and had a lot of the shoulder pads uh, and the chest armor. If you want to get that one, get that one. It's not the best one. This is obviously the best one with the cloth goods. Uh, if you're able to secure, I believe there is a AT... I'm not sure what they're called, RT, uh, or just one of those walkers that has the um, a ARF clones. And you can get them and use them as a lightning squadron. I got two when I was younger, so it would mimic the show. Uh, but it would be very difficult to get two now. They're not the easiest to obtain. Quickly skimming through the next one which not everyone has, which I'm surprised, is the Eeth Koth. Now, he looks like Aegon Kola who was one of the ones killed, unfortunately, when they took on Darth Sidious in Revenge of the Sith. Why they didn't make an Aegon Cola, I'm not sure. Because we know he was alive at the time. But they made an Eeth Koth, who was of the same species and probably the same temperament. Uh, but they created a new one, which I, you know, yes, variety. Um, but he looks almost identical, just in cartoon form. I thought they were a bit silly to get away from Aegon Cola, who's already not an established character, but a named character. Uh, within the Star Wars universe. This figure is also a really great design. It came with the cloth goods. Looks more realistic. Uh, the face, as you can see, quite well designed. Good paint job there on the forearms. He's, of course, captured by Grievous in what is a fantastic episode. Now, probably a quick spoiler. When we're talking about doing an episode where... We'll have probably the best design, the most effort put into a figure. A sneaky number one or number two could be this one, the Shark T. Almost completely made with cloth goods. Uh, she's got the, not the necklace, but the scarf design here. The head is a fantastic paint job all the way on the top. I believe their species is a Togruta or similar. 
with the lightsaber there. She was a fantastic design, absolute punish to put on the stand, however. And keep her standing. Uh, but great design there. I, I tell you what, I figure that got the most effort would have to be this one. Uh, she was not popular uh, when she was on the shelves, which I think was a real shame. Um, but if you get her on card, which will be in the Dark Skies line, uh, keep her in pack. Do not open her. That's a very hard to find pack, particularly in Australia. There's not too many of them. Shark T, another member of the Jedi Council that you've got to pick up. Now, not all the characters here are Jedi Council. Uh, of course, you've got Nadar, Veb, and Ahsoka, who are just Jedi Padawans. Um, there's a few other ones in here that are just Jedi Knights. We'll bring in one right now. We mentioned her earlier, it's Ayla Sakura. From my knowledge, she was not a Jedi Master. I believe she was a Jedi Knight, a well-established Jedi Knight. If she was a Jedi Master, geez, it must have been right before the end. Uh, good paint job on this figure. Good design. Looks very close to how she did in the TV series. She appeared in the one episode where they helped the natives on uh, some planet. I can't remember what that one's called. My knowledge is escaping me now. Lean figure. Very lean. Very difficult to pose. Uh, without the stands. So good luck with that. We'll bring in another. I believe he is a Jedi Master. And a fantastic figure. He is of course Quinlan Voss. Known as one of the Dark Acolytes. He's got his own spin-off. Which had to have been an arc. Uh, in possibly if they did a season 8. It had to be in there. It would have been absolutely fantastic. Uh, you'll notice here he's got a very elongated lightsaber. Which I believe was for two hand handling. And for power strikes. Of course had those iconic dreadlocks. The face paint. The tattoos. Well not tattoos but more arm paint. A couple of scars there. He's also cloth goods. Put him down here. Another one that you need to get in your collection. Was not easily available. He came with a hoverboard. Which I think is sitting on one of the shelves here. Uh, limited screen time. Helped Kenobi take on Cad Bane in the hunt for Zero. Zero the Hut. Now, one that would be in everyone's collection, but you might not have this exact figure, is the Cloth Good Plo Koon. Uh, he's obviously got the hoodie at the back there. I believe he came with a cape. I believe this is the one from the Speeder Bike Pack. Uh, there is another one where he's got uh, his cloth goods here are just plastic. That one's not quite as good. I believe that might be the one with the double lightsabers. Not entirely sure, but another one you've got to have in your collection. He's obviously part of the High Council. A good friend of Ahsoka. Get him in there. Another great figure. Getting down to the bottom now. We'll get this one in there. Another fan favourite, Kiati Mundi. Would be everyone's grandfather if you applied him to reality. Wise and a warrior. Leads the troops on the front line. Probably one of the older ones here outside of Yoda. And I imagine Evan Peel is a species that lives forever. He was one of the first ones to come out. I believe he was in the first line of the Dark Series. Dark Sky Series. They got him pretty accurate to how he looked in the show. Uh, looking very tired around the eyes. He has a good arc on Geonosis where he assists them. Another one which was on Geonosis, Luminara Unduli. Again, we've got another cloth goods, which is, if you can't notice it, that's our theme. Um, on the dress here, all this effort and design into the gold painting, absolutely fantastic. Even on the face, they get all that right with all her tattoos, particularly on the chin. They just got it right, and you can tell they put a lot of effort into it. Put her there. Uh, her, her apprentice... Another one who had a good story arc, which I think they could have explored a little bit more, was of course Barris Offy, not a Jedi Master. We've got her with her accessories here, with the worms. Her lightsaber there. Another one that had fantastic design, particularly as we have a look at the face. They put a lot of effort into this one. Even her hood. Like the effort that they've put in here. Absolutely fantastic. Not cheap, however, to get. She will cost you an arm and a leg. We go again, cloth goods. Pop her to the side here. Uh, we do have multiple of her on Battle Pack. One. And two. 
we'll bring back have a quick look we do have multiple of her we try to keep them in best condition as possible not easy to obtain swing one round fantastic artworks on the back put a lot of effort into these ones I believe there's about four of those here in the collection uh, she was identified early as one that needed to be picked up because it was so rare. I believe in the line that she was in, it was her and the clone Riot Trooper. Uh, so we made sure to pick up a few of those as quickly as we could. And the last one that we'll bring in is the iconic Psy C Tin. Great figure, quite bulky, particularly on the head, but there was some great design. They put a lot of effort into painting this one. So I'm just trying to get the focus for you, is it now? A little bit better there. Cloth goods, again, only the best for the collection. So in bringing him in, you've then got Kit Fisto, Sai C Tin, Mace Windu, uh, and Eth Koth up the back, who is essentially Agen Kolar. You've got all the members um, of the showdown with Darth Sidious, so you can recreate that. The only issue is that they didn't create a Chancellor Palpatine Clone Wars figure, which I thought was insane. They could have absolutely brought him in. He would have been fantastic. You look at the Lego series now in the Queen Armadala Lego series. You know, she's not a Jedi. Um, you know, she's not a clone trooper. She's not a combatant. And it's one of the rarest figures. You get a Chancellor Palpatine in his bright red robes. Get the headpiece there, the big shoulder pads. You know, he might come with the... Uh, like the Senate spear or the trident that his assistant always holds. I thought they were fools for not making him. He could have come in a set with an Anakin and a Padme, for example, or an Anakin and an R2, or an Anakin and a clone. He had to come with an Anakin, is what I'm saying. Um, but these are the these are the things that they've missed out on Disney. We had a rant on them in the start. We'll have a little rant on them now. Um, but just to cover off on all the Clone Wars figures here, these are the figures that I believe are the Jedi figures that were created in the Clone Wars Hasbro style. These are the ones that you need to have to make up your Jedi Council. Uh, if you get spares, a lot of these you will find loose, not with lightsabers. Um, so if you have the opportunity to just grab them and have them stand around, not quite in a circle, but you can certainly replicate what appears to be the Jedi Council and have them standing around and have that in your collection. Um, but we're going to bring in two Jedi that obviously aren't in the Clone Wars TV series. Uh, they aren't even in any series. One of them gets closely mentioned in the new trilogy, where they refer to him as Ben Solo. But of course, that's not his name. His name is, of course, Jason Solo. And this is the third and final rant we're going to go on with Disney today. As we turn, have a quick look here. We've got the Jaina and Jason or J Jayana and Jason Solo packs. Very rare and elusive to find, not easily obtained. Particularly to getting them together and keeping them in good condition, which I believe we've done. Jaina Solo gets no mention anywhere. You know, we've just watched a trilogy which focuses on Ray and Finn and Poe, who are just the worst characters whatsoever. There's absolutely no value in them. Ray essentially names herself a Skywalker. No one understands that. That's a poor choice. Um... She could have been a Jaina Solo. That could have been her. My goodness, it almost looks like her. I can't believe we've, we've gone down that line. Anyway, you know, Luke and Leia were taken away as children. Who's to say that Han and Leia didn't have their children taken away for their own safety as well? You know, one being a scoundrel, the other being, you know, like a political refugee and, a, and an active rebellist. I thought that storyline was there as well. Uh, to be mimicked, take those two children away, have them take, you know, have... Luke Skywalker look after Jason, which is what they kind of did. And even if he still turns to the dark side, fuck, whatever. But that storyline was there, sort of. They they had that going. But the the Jaina Solo one, they just didn't go with. Ray could have easily been that, and they created the backstory from there. You know, even if she renamed herself Ray, that's fine. But as long as she knew that she was Jaina Solo. She had this bond with Princess Leia anyway. The story was there. I don't. I just don't get it. Sit me in a room with these marketing executives. I'll sort them out in five minutes. Disney, please, I'm ready. I've got a job, but I'm happy to be employed. Get some secondary employment. We have a look at the back here, these wonderful figures. Um, just, just to have some further proof that the word Ben Solo is one of the worst decisions ever, 
His name is there, Jason Solo. Jason Solo is the son of Han and Leia Solo. You're kidding. There's no need for Kylo Ren. Adam Driver, great actor. Could have played this character. Could have played him as Jason Solo. He could have a nickname of Ben. That's fine. But this is who Ben Solo, a.k.a. Kylo Ren is. He's Jason Solo. I do not understand why they had to make that change. This was already there, ready for Disney to use. Ray is essentially Jaina Solo. And if we're only just making these comparisons now, fantastic. We want you guys to learn. We want you to learn the Star Wars stuff. Perhaps one of you guys is a Disney executive. Perhaps you'll pick something up here. These two, unfortunately, are going to set you back. Oh, my goodness, for the pair. You could be looking anywhere between three to $600. Just depends on who your seller is. Um, we've obviously got them with a Darth Maul sticker on the front here, still in good condition. The boxes themselves are still in good condition. These are not easy to pick up. Um, we do have a second Jason Solo here. Uh, maybe over in the back box there. Two that you need to pick up, just for your collection of Star Wars in general. Obviously, they're not in the Clone Wars, like everyone here is. But two that you want to pick up. So aside from the rants, I'm hoping that there's a lot of info that you've picked up today. You've identified a figure that you've at least missed, uh, and the relevance of that figure. I believe the next episode we're going to do, we might do the Bounty Hunters. Well, I've got a suggestion to do the 212. We've got a lot of 212 stuff here. Uh, Clone Wars and other. Uh, and another one we might do is the Sith Lords, or the Dark Side, at least. We at least know we can cover off on Dooku, Sidious, Maul, Savage, um, Asajj Ventress, Barriss Offy. Again, she'll appear in two. And plenty more outside of that. And um, we'll have a look at the Darth Sidious collections, which we have here. We've got a large Sidious collection that we're very proud of. And we'll look to show that off. Always enjoy your comments. We read through those to see what we can add and any input that we can put in there. Uh, into our next video so please mate drop as many comments as you like good bad or ugly we don't mind we're happy to have a read and see what we can improve all we're doing here is a learning experience and a, and a bit of a teaching role where we show off the collection um, but we also show what you may be missing you may watch this video and go yep i've got 12 of those 13 figures and i just don't have that one that they showed there and if we can help you identify that and help you identify how much you're looking at paying and where you can pick it up from that's our fantastic and that's our goal uh, so we hope you've enjoyed this one. Uh, this is all the Jedi and a couple of little sneakies in there as well. We'll look forward to the next episode.